Welcome to TCM tonight. I'm Alicia Malone and I'm excited to be kicking off our month-long spotlight on screwball comedies, the fast-talking, wise-cracking subgenre that poked fun at social class and the battle of the sexes and gave us madcap heiresses, befuddled leading men, laughs, romance, action and plenty of innuendo. It all began in the early 1930s and these comedies, with their emphasis on making the rich look silly, were an escapist comfort to audiences during the Great Depression. Also, around this time, the production code was being established, which banned explicit content. So writers and directors became cleverer and sneakier, using dialogue and banter between the male and female characters to suggest sexual chemistry. This gave actors and actresses a chance to shine equally and led to several wonderful pairings between stars. In tonight's lineup, we have four screwball comedies starring either Cary Grant or Catherine Hepburn, or both. And we're starting with one featuring both Bringing Up Baby, directed by Howard Hawks from 1938. Cary Grant started acting in movies in 1932, but really hit his stride and became a star when writer-director Leo McCary brought out his comedic side in the screwball comedy The Awful Truth from 1937. Despite that success, he wasn't the first choice for the male lead in Bringing Up Baby, only getting the role after actors like Ray Milland, Leslie Howard, Frederick March and Robert Montgomery said no or were unavailable. This project was more of a vehicle for Catherine Hepburn, intended to give her a break from period romances. Based on a short story by Hagar Wilde, who adapted the screenplay along with Dudley Nichols, Cary Grant plays a paleontologist named David Huxley, who gets mixed up with Catherine Hepburn's zany Susan Vance and a leopard named Baby. At first, Grant was unsure about taking on this role, which involves quite a bit of physical comedy, but Howard Hawks encouraged him to channel the spirit of the silent film comedian Harold Lloyd, and in the end, Grant helped to create one of the best physical gags in the film, the scene where Susan's dress gets ripped at the back. From 1938, enjoy Bringing Up Baby. Famously, Bringing Up Baby wasn't a hit when it was first released in 1938, and critics and audiences were particularly harsh on Catherine Hepburn. This was her last film in her contract with RKO, and she was placed on the list of stars who were supposedly box office poison. But now, of course, critics point to Bringing Up Baby as being the quintessential screwball comedy for the way it involves so many tropes of the subgenre, from Hepburn's scatterbrained heiress and Cary Grant's hapless character to the fast-paced dialogue, the many layers of misunderstandings and the spoofing of the upper class. And eventually, thanks to screenings on television and re-releases in theatres, Bringing Up Baby did find an appreciative audience. Director Howard Hawks was one of the filmmakers who helped establish the form of the screwball comedy, making one of the first, 20th Century from 1934. And despite the box office failure of Bringing Up Baby, Hawks worked with Cary Grant a few more times. After the romantic drama Only Angels Have Wings, they made another classic screwball comedy, and it's the one we have for you next in our spotlight. This time, Cary Grant is paired with Rosalind Russell, playing the editor of a newspaper. See you soon.